How do you guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming Scenics and in this video I'm going to try something different. Using some models from Titanforge miniatures, I'm going to attempt a cyberpunk theme-esque diorama and miniature painting with their new range of 3D printable Cyberforge miniatures. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. So I'm going to start this video on a negative. I love and sometimes fucking hate 3D printing. There's a lot of reasons for it. Now 3D printing is made out to be print and play, straightforward, anybody can do it. And there's a lot of truth to that statement. It is a hobby within a hobby. And the reason I say this is it's all well and good if everything's going to plan. But when something goes wrong, where it's a software issue or whether it's a hardware issue, you need to have some basic knowledge of how the things work to problem solve. The problem I was having with the Lothmax printer is that I couldn't get any access from the community um, and I actually messaged Lothmax and got nothing back. The reality was a hardware issue. It's just a few loose screws on the Z-axis, meaning it was a bit wobbly and causing some failed prints. But from trial and error, messing around with the machine, I eventually figured it out. But the problem with this is it's all the cleaning out and in between till you get to the bottom of it. But I now understand the printers a hell of a lot better. Now I'm not saying this to put anybody off 3D printing. I'm just trying to be a bit more real about it. When you get to the bottom of the problems and you start getting a lot more experience with printers, they're brilliant tools to have. And when these models printed off, I was really happy with them. And I've even printed these off on entry level printers. And the quality is pretty reasonable. The one thing I really do like about Titanforge is offering the pre supported models. The one thing that I did have to learn was you have to up the exposure time slightly because the contact points are very small. But the benefit to that and up in the exposure time means that you don't have to spend much time cleaning the models up. They just peel off the supports and it makes cleaning them quick and effortless, which is an absolute bonus and something that I've not experienced before. And now I've got the settings dialed in, I can actually print up to around five models on a print bed and have them come out in about four hours, clean them, and start painting all in the same day. Which is great, because if you're anything like me, I, I get an idea and I need to do it now. I've got no patience whatsoever. So while I'm painting these, I'm thinking more about the diorama and how am I supposed to make these four models that don't technically look like they're doing anything fit into a scene. So while I'm painting them, I'm thinking this guy with the denim jacket, he's got to be a bouncer. I even think the file's called a bouncer. <laughs> and then I've got this big guy, I've got a cyborg, and I've got a guy that looks a lot like a punk. So I thought I'd make three of them like gang members. They're hanging around in a rough part of town, and they're going to lynch the doorman before going into the bar and causing some ruckus. So this made me think... That part of town needs to look rough. It doesn't want to be in the city centre. It wants to be in a part of town that's neglected. So I start painting them in dark clothing and just making them look like, almost like biker gangs. That's the inspiration for this build. So let's show you how I took this idea and turned it into a physical model. Now, I have to make a plan. Normally when I jump in to doing scenics or doing like a flow of country hillsides you can just literally play it by ear and see how it goes cities are built up of squares blocks straight right angles it's not something that i'm particularly good at so it's best to plan the idea out on the base of what you're going to be working on and i planned this sort of path road building and an alleyway out on the baseboard before i started work on it now when building dioramas at this scale, I don't like using foam, especially for like red brick and curb stones and things, because they become very delicate, because they're so thin and they're so 
lightweight. All you've got to do is press down a little bit too hard and you've got a massive dint in it or, or they blow away when you're trying to work. I like to make them out of resin. These molds I've used many times before and you find them in the links below. Now this way is a little bit more time consuming because you have to cast each thing up and pop it all out and clean them all up. But once you're all set up, the diorama comes together a lot quicker. Now laying bricks is usually very time consuming because you're trying to do it neat. Now because I was doing a really old rundown part of town, I'm going with like a modern day build that's being kept standing upright. That's what I'm going for, so it's slightly collapsing. It doesn't matter whether the bricks are all over the place, not laid properly, they've got big air bubbles in the casts, it doesn't matter, because it's all going to act to the, add to the effect later. So building an old rundown building like this, is, it goes together pretty quickly. It is quite fiddly though. Now for steel work, RCJs, whatever you want to call them, I didn't have any H-bar, but I did have this like sort of trunking. It's a styrene U-shape, you can get them in loads of different sizes, they're all over the place. And I just thought what I'll do is I'll just roughly mark out the size that I want this and just fit it to the top of the bricks as like they've put it in afterwards as like a support. So what I did was I just cut these pieces of styrene and mounted them around all the foam bog structure as like a, a new metal frame. Now for the metal work and cladding, I just thought simple with this, I thought I'll just use some plastic card, that's pretty smooth and I can texture it later. So I cut a piece of plastic card which was the same size as the exposed foam board so it wasn't as recessed when putting the cladding on. For the cladding it's just strips of plastic card to resemble like 8 foot by 4 foot strips of plastic card. I cut them to roughly the same size as the models so it resembles roughly 8 by 4 feet. Now the other bonus to 3D printing stuff is just little greebles like this. If I had time I possibly would make a lot of this myself but I was to a strict time constraint so I just 3D printed some lamp posts and bits and pieces just to add to the scene. Now this is what I really hate about doing your own supports is having to clip and clean them and then you get scarring all over the model. But I wasn't overly bothered because this was going to be like a run part of, run down part of town so there was going to be rust and damage on things anyway so I just left it rough and didn't spend much time on cleaning them up. The bins were just something to hide the backdrop so when I put the model in there's just something behind them so it takes the eye away of it just being an empty space. Now once we've done that bit we get it primed and then we get onto the fun part, the painting. For priming I just use an airbrush to put down the base colours and a few little highlights. I did paint things a little bit brighter than I wanted because I was going to be using a lot of weathering powders and washers to tone this down. So on the red brick I went on with a terracotta and I did lighten it quite a bit. Even over this blacky grey base coat it still came out rather pink which is good because once you go in and stipple this with some really dark greys, some browns and even going in with some really pale tans just in small areas with a broken sponge just to get all them different colours all over your bricks and this will all tie together later. Now I dry brushed the curbstone with a pale grey and a bit on the road we are going to be weathering this up later. If anybody's interested in the road, it is literally just 280 sandpaper. I have got a video planned where I show you how to make really nice tarmac roads later. Now base ready black sand from my range mixed with, in with some super glue to get some really heavy rusty areas. And then we also mix in the black sand to some paint, any colour paint will do. And then stipple it on in places to represent the lighter rust or the paint peeling in areas. Now I wanted the cladding to be like a very dark browny green so I'm painting it a very olivey colour because when I start washing this down it will appear more brown than green later. Applying dark brown washers to the red brick will really wash this down, I even put some black wash on afterwards as well to take it down even further uh, which will have a nice effect when we do the pointing later. For the dry rust, uh, we're just using Citadel dry rust, but any bright orange paint will do. 
But with the black sand from my range, it's like 0.1 millimeters ultra fine. So when you put this wash on over the dry brushing, it really sort of simulates that heavy rust to very light sort of paint bubbling underneath the the sur like surface rust and I really do like the effect. Now for putting in the pointing I don't use pigments. Pigments don't seem to work as well. I use tile grout. You will see me using tile grout an awful lot and it's because when this gets damp it turns to like a paste and obviously then hardens like cement. Pigments don't tend to do that and they do fall out and you have to put glues on it and everything else to help set them in. Tile grout sets itself and it does what tile grout does, it fills the gaps in between your tiles. Now the way to get this to activate and set is to brush off the excess. Now to brush off the excess I just use a damp sponge, like in tile grouting. But what that does is it cleans the surface and it also moistens the small amount of tile grout that you've got in between them bricks. And then in a couple of hours that does start to turn and dry and the next day it's not coming out, it's solid. And as you can see that just adds an awesome realistic element to this and it makes that terrible brick lane which it wasn't very good actually look a lot better it looks more like a proper wall. Now to age this and weather this, this is where the pigments come into place. So around the bottom I'm literally just putting some dark dirt coloured pigment powders around the base of the edge of the road, the wall and everything else and that sort of clings to that tile grout as well and just mutes it down a little bit so it doesn't look too clean and new. It looks like it's just old mortar that's starting to fall out. And I know people are going to be saying, Luke, how do you fix that in place? I just did it with matte varnish and I've not really had much of a problem. So just spray it with a matte varnish. Now for some water effects, I'm going to try this. We've recently started selling this deluxe material stuff. I've not actually used a single part water. I am aware that this stuff shrinks quite a lot, but for small things like puddles and like little reservoirs of water like up against the curb, I thought this was going to be a lot easier to use, and it was. You literally just spout it where you need. It does lump up and it is very thick at the moment, but all I do is I just put that down and then I just sort of use a brush to feather it into the shape that I want and then when that dries it shrinks back to about half a mil. So it's good for little things like this, but I wouldn't say it's great for a pond or pool of water. It's great for surface water and it might even be great for textures. I will play with it more and let you know further. I was at a point with the diorama where I was thinking, does it need anything else? And what I like to do at that point is I stick the models on. The models add that bit of colour that you feel that it's missing. It sort of completes it. However, I still wasn't happy. It needed some brighter colours. So I thought what I'd do is I'd get some posters. These are just logos of Titan Forge and uh, the Cyber Forge range, which I thought would complement the uh, diorama well. And a Cyberpunk poster, because it's obvious. <laughs> to apply these posters, it takes a very professional technique putting the glue on the brickwork so you're not blocking it out on camera <laughs> and then once you've got that glue on just press it into place and then paint the glue over the poster and that'll just set in and a bit of matte varnish to finish it off so it gets rid of the glue. Posters are not hard to do but they really do take your models up a notch and another focal point to look at where somebody looks at it and goes oh look you know little posters it's a nice little thing to do and it doesn't take much effort at all. Now, it would have been nice to do an in-city, in neon lights, LEDs, you know the look that I'm on about. It'd be nice to do something like that. But for practicing skills, doing an out-city suburb like this that's a bit run down is a lot simpler and a quite a lot quicker. And I really enjoy the look you can get from a few very simple techniques and not a lot of expensive tools. I really enjoyed this build and I'd like to thank Titan Forge for sponsoring this episode. 
By joining their Patreon, you're guaranteed to receive a fresh pack of models each month up to around 20 models. And these include big vehicles, bits of terrain, soldiers of fortune, cyberpunk, tech mechs, robots, aliens, tanks, whatever you can think of, even down to the bases, guys. And this month's models are sh top. For more information, guys, just check the links below. I hope you've liked this video and let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you for the next video. Love, love, love.